Hi students, let's get started on notes about moles and molar conversions. How about your science notebook? Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the essential question. What is a mole and how is it used? Well, we've talked about moles previously. A mole is just a standard international or SI metric unit that represents a chemical quantity. So we've talked about how it represents a general quantity, but we're gonna get more specific today and actually talk about what that quantity is. Specifically, a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of things. Now that might seem like a weird number, but I wanna show you some other special quantities that you're probably more familiar with and relate it back to the mole. If I if I say a dozen or one dozen, your brain probably automatically and quickly thinks of the number 12, 12 things. Now that could be 12 eggs, it could be 12 of anything, it could be 12 people, a dozen people, it could be a dozen anything. Same thing with a pair. When I say one pair, you probably think, oh, a pair of shoes is two shoes, or a pair of scissors, or a pair of pants. One pair represents two things, and it doesn't matter what we're talking about. Well, a mole is not something you're quite used to. You probably don't think of a number when I say a mole, but to a chemist, a mole invokes the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things. These are all special quantities, and we've made these units to manage large quantities a lot easier. And the mole does the same thing for a chemist. This is what that number looks like written out of scientific notation. This is the longhand notation. It's 602 sextillion. This is a very large number and kind of hard to wrap our brain around, but I really recommend if you want to understand how big this number is, maybe go check out this YouTube video called How Big is a Mole by Ted Ed. So why is this such a big number? What is the deal with this really large, really random number? Well, chemists have to deal with very large quantities of things because atoms and molecules are so small, there's a lot of them. There's billions, there's trillions of them inside whatever we're looking at. For example, take a look at this pile of carbon here and this number. This is how many atoms of car that are in this pile of carbon. And it's a very small pile of carbon. Instead of saying that number, which to tell you the truth, I don't even know how to say, it would be a lot easier to say that there are three moles of carbon. So kind of the key thing is moles are typically used to represent the quantities of atoms or molecules. You can represent anything, but typically we use it to represent the number of atoms and or molecules. Now, this is the molar conversion process. This is really what we're using a mole for. A mole is kind of the middleman between grams and numbers of atoms. So if we wanted to figure out how many grams a substance is and we knew it's moles, we could do that, or vice versa. If we knew how much something weighed, we can use and figure out how many moles that is. To do that, we would use something called the molar mass, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, moles also can take us to the number of atoms. If we knew the moles of something, we can use a special number called Avogadro's number to figure out the number of atoms. Or if we knew how many atoms were in a substance, we could reverse that and figure out how many moles there are. And so, like I said, this is the molar conversion process, and these are the two things we need to know in order to go between these units, grams, moles, and numbers of atoms. Let's start with a molar mass. We've kind of talked about it previous, but a molar mass is one mole. It's how much you would need to weigh to have one mole of a substance. Now, how do we know how much of that is? Well, we would use the periodic table. The periodic table, the masses on there tell us the molar mass of a substance. For example, lithium, if you look on the periodic table, its mass is 6.941. And previously we talked about how that represents the average um, uh, isotope mass of that compound. But a cool thing about it is, is if we just change the number to grams, if we change the unit to grams, that represents how much you would need to weigh of lithium to have one mole of lithium. And that's lithium's molar mass. We can do this for compounds as well. Carbon dioxide is made of one carbon and two oxygens. And so if we add all of these masses on the periodic table, we would get its molar mass. Or in other words, if we weighed 40.01 grams of carbon dioxide, we would have one mole of carbon dioxide. Now, how do we use a molar mass? Well, a molar mass is used in these two important formulas. Make sure you have these formulas written down. You might write it on your periodic table or a little note card and keep it because it's going to be really important. These two formulas take us from one unit to another. For example, this top one takes us from grams to moles. So if we knew the grams of a substance, we can figure out using the molar mass how many moles of a substance that is. Or likewise, if we knew the moles of a substance, we can 
can use this formula on the bottom to figure out how many grams of that substance. And so in order to do both of these equations, we would also need to be able to figure out what the molar mass is. So let's start with a practice. How many moles of are 15.6 grams of copper 2 nitrate. And there's the formula for copper 2 nitrate. So if you look at this practice problem, what we're doing is we're trying to take grams of a substance and we're trying to figure out how many moles of that substance there are. And so we have those two formulas. Can you guess which one we're going to need to use? Well, we're definitely going to need to use the top one because the top one is taking us from grams of a substance to moles of a substance. So we don't need this bottom equation. All right, we're going to take our 15.6 grams and we're going to plug it in this equation. Now, in order to solve the equation, we need to know the molar mass of copper 2 nitrate. And so copper 2 nitrate is made of one copper two nitrogens and six oxygens. This two on the outside of nitrate gets foiled into the nitrogen and the oxygens. And so if we add up all of those masses, copper is 64.55, nitrogen is 14.01, but there's two of them, and then oxygen is 16.00, and there are six of them. If we add all those masses together, we're going to get a total molar mass of copper 2 nitrate. That gets plugged into our formula in the molar mass. Now, if I take and plug this into a calculator, which might look something like this, then I'm going to get my answer, which is 0 0.0827 moles. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is the mole. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is a special number named after one of the scientists who kind of came up with the concept of a mole and really figured out what this number is. The number is the numerical quantity of one mole, and it doesn't matter what substance you have. In fact, take a look at this picture over on the right. Here we have a balloon of helium, and in this balloon of helium, they've basically massed out or weighed out one mole of helium. And in that balloon, there are 602 sextillion atoms of helium. If you look at this graduated cylinder, there's water in there. There's about 18 milliliters of water or 18 grams of water, but there are the same number of water molecules in that graduated cylinder as there are helium molecules in the balloon. Same with all of these substances. They all represent the same quantity. It might not look like it, but remember, they're different substances. It's kind of like 12 eggs and 12 people both represent a dozen, even though they might have different weights and sizes. Same with all of these things. They all represent the quantity 602 sextillion or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules, even though that they are different substances. So how do we use Avogadro's number? Well, Avogadro's number takes us between moles and numbers of either atoms or molecules. And so this top formula up here, we are going to want to write this down as well. If we have moles and we wanted to figure out how many atoms or molecules there are, we would use Avogadro's number to do that in this format. Similarly, if we knew how many atoms or molecules were in a compound or whatever we're looking at, we would multiply it by Avogadro's number in this format and we would be able to figure out how many moles there are. So let's start with the practice. So we're going to take 0 0.0827 moles of copper 2 nitrate, and we want to figure out how many atoms there are. And so we're taking moles, and we're trying to figure out how many atoms are, I guess these are atoms, these are molecules. We're trying to figure out how many molecules there are. And so here's our two formulas, kind of the same concept. We don't need this bottom one because we're not going from atoms. We're starting with moles, so we don't need that bottom one. We're going to go ahead and plug in our 0 0.0827 moles. And we're going to multiply it by Avogadro's number over 1. So remember, Avogadro's number is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It doesn't matter what the substance is. So if we take that and plug it into the calculator kind of like this, we're going to get our answer. Now, notice I put Avogadro's number in parentheses because it's in scientific notation. I want to make sure that in my calculator, I keep that contained. You might also notice that my calculator has this little E symbol right there. Well, that's just representing represents scientific notation. It would be 4.98, and the E stands for times 10, and then the number after it represents the exponent to the 22nd. So that's our answer for this problem. All right, this is kind of everything we just kind of learned in a nutshell. These are, this is the molar conversions chart. Again, all everything about the mole, the mole is kind of the middleman to take us between grams and moles, 
or the moles can take us between moles and numbers of atoms or vice versa. To go between grams and moles, we would use the molar mass. And these are the two formulas we would be used to do that. To go between moles and numbers of atoms, we would use Avogadro's number. And these are the two formulas we would use for that. So this is a really kind of just a simplified chart of all the things that we need to know and all the calculations we would need to make in order to do that. I do have a couple of helpful hints. These are common mistakes or struggles that I see students have, and I really recommend you watch out for these things. Don't use the molar mass or Avogadro's number where you don't need them. For example, if you're going between grams and moles of a substance, if you're going from grams to moles or from moles to grams, we use the molar mass. We don't need Avogadro's number in order to do that. Similarly, if we're going between moles and numbers of atoms or molecules, or the other way around, then we need to use Avogadro's number, but we don't need a molar mass. So pay attention to the, what the question's asking. Don't do extra work you don't need if you don't need it. Second is, and I mentioned this before, put numbers using scientific notation in parentheses. For example, Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, I always contain that in its own parentheses, and so the, the calculator won't mess things up. Remember, the calculator has to follow orders of operations, and if I don't put those things in parentheses, it might screw up my calculations. All right. Let's do one more practice. I really recommend you pause this video and see if you can do it yourself. It says, what is the mass of 1.93 times 10 to the 24 molecules of calcium chloride? A couple of hints here. You're going to need a formula for calcium chloride. Um, also, you're going to go from molecules to moles, and then you're going to go from moles to grams. So you're going to need two formulas to do this. Pause the video, see if you can figure it out. Did you try it yourself? I hope so. Let's see if we can go over that answer and see if you got it right. All right, the first formula we're going to use is the one using Avogadro's number, specifically in this format. We're going to start with our 1.93 times 10 to the 24, and this is numbers of molecules. We're not dealing with atoms because it's calcium chloride, and we're going to figure out how many moles that is. Remember, Avogadro's number is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so if I plug that into my calculator, and it might look something like this, then I'm going to figure out that the moles is about 3.21 moles. But that's not the question. It wants to know the mass. So I need to do one more step. I need to take my moles and figure out how many grams there are. So I'm going to take my 3.21 moles and plug it into this new equation. And this time I'm going to use the molar mass of calcium chloride. Remember, calcium chloride is CaCl2. That's one calcium and two chlorines. So if I look on the periodic table and add those masses up, then I'm going to get a total mass of 110.98. That's the molar mass, not the mass of the calcium chloride that I have. So I'm going to take that molar mass and plug it into my equation, and then I'm going to get an answer if I plug it in. So here's the answer in my calculator. It's about 356 grams. So if I had 1.93 times 10 to the 24 molecules of calcium chloride, then that's approximately 356 grams. Or if I weighed 356 grams of calcium chloride, then I have that many molecules on my scale, which is really neat. All right. That leads us to the end of our notes. Take some time to review these notes. Go back, highlight key turns. Ponder and ask questions. Even if you don't have a question, maybe try to think of your own questions and see if you can come up with your own ideas to really understand the material. Or go and find your instructor or other study group and see if you can ask the questions there to really understand it. Finally, summarize the essential question. Answer it in a deep way with some examples and some facts. All right, good luck.